Example 8.4.1, part A, sketch the curves y equals 4 over x squared and y equals x squared multiplied by x take 3 on the same axes. Well, first of all, make sure you follow the instruction in the question. It wants you to do them on the same axes, so do not draw them on separate ones, because there you'll be thrown away marks in the exam. I've drawn my axes already, and since I'm drawing the 4 over x squared graph, I know there's going to be a couple of asymptotes, so I've drawn them on to begin with. When you know there's going to be asymptotes, it's always a good idea to draw them first. So I suggest you pause the video for a moment and get your axes and your asymptotes drawn. Okay, so now the two graphs. Let's do 4 over x squared first. So this is of the form something positive over x squared, positive over positive. As we saw in the previous section, 8.3, all the y values that come out of this little function are going to be positive. As x gets bigger, y gets smaller. So this is the general shape that we get. Make sure it does not across the x-axis or the y-axis and try and make it look almost as, as symmetrical as you can. I'm going to stick with that. That'll do. And then label your graph 4 over x squared. You should always label your graphs when you're doing two graphs on the same axes. Now the other one, if we expanded the brackets on this, we would get a cubic, and the x cubed term would be positive. So think about the general shape of a positive cubic. Okay, the general shape is usually something like this. It doesn't have to have two turning points. Sometimes it will just have a point of inflection. So it would be one of those two shapes. Let's think about where it crosses the x axis. To do that we need it fully factorized and it already is fully factorized so that's useful. So don't waste your time expanding the brackets. Because it's fully factorized we can see it has a repeated root when x is 0. So we could write this as x times another x times x minus 3. So x is a factor twice. When that factor is 0, x is 0. So it's repeated because it's more than once. When we have a repeated root, as I hope you remember from the beginning of chapter 8, we get a turning point on the graph. So there will be a turning point when x is 0. The other root will be x equals 3. That is the other x value that will make one of the factors 0. So turning point when x is 0, and it will go through the x-axis when x is 3. So going back to this shape, it's definitely got a turning point when x is 0. So x would be 0 here, and then it will go through the x-axis when x is 3. I can now sketch the graph. So turning point when x is 0, and then going through when x is 3. Don't go labelling the other turning point as 3 because that it isn't. 3 is where it goes through the x-axis. And remember to label your graph. So that's part A. We've done exactly what it wanted us to do. Make sure you always check that before you move on. Check, have you done everything the question asks you to do? Part B, using a sketch. So don't do anything from scratch. Use your sketch. State with a reason the number of real solutions to this equation. Let's write it down. x to the 4 brackets x take 3 take 4 equals 0. So exam technique here. 
we've seen the words using your sketch. So it's got to have something to do with the sketch. We're going to just state how many solutions there are to this equation. Note, we're not trying to solve the equation. We're simply going to say how many solutions there would be. So don't try and solve it. Well, it must be related to the graph because the question says so. And you, you do see a small similarity. We've got this x minus 3 that we've also got on one of the graphs. Let's start rearranging this, see if we can make it look more like the two graphs we've drawn. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So add 4 to both sides. And we notice the 4, one of the graphs is 4 over x squared. So now I'm thinking, let's divide both sides of this equation by x squared. And when I do divide both sides by x squared, I notice we get the two equations, one on each side of this equation. So the two graphs we've drawn, one on each side of this equation. And at this moment, we can go back to basics. The solutions to an equation like this are where the two graphs intersect each other. That's something that you should have known for a long time now. If you had an equation like this, you could draw each side of the graph and where they intersect, that gives you the solutions to the equation. So let's answer the question now. State, with a reason, the number of real solutions to this equation. So there will be, let's look at the graph. How often do they intersect? Just the once. After they intersect, the cubic then goes up to infinity. The asymptote heads towards the x-axis. On the other side, these two sections on the left, they're never going to meet. So there will be one real solution. Here's the reason, because the graphs intersect once. I just want to briefly mention the word real there. Any number that you could put on a number line, so that's a thing that you possibly met at primary school, number lines. Um, so zero and then positive numbers on the right, negative numbers on the left. It's not just for whole numbers either, it's for all the decimals as well. So any number you could put on the number line, we call a real number. You don't really need to worry about it too much. Unless you're studying further maths, then you'll only work with real numbers. So all the numbers we work with in A-level maths and the numbers you've met at GCSE and before that, they're all called real numbers. Now, there are non-real numbers, but we don't study them at A-level maths. So you need to use the word where, where appropriate. And in this case, if the word real hadn't been in the question, it wouldn't have really been that much different. Okay, so there we go. That is example 8.4.1.